What's going on YouTube? This is Necrostevo and it's time for week four of the Indigo League of Legends. And uh, this week the Venice Venus are going to be going up against the San Francisco Swampert, whom of course are coached by Connor, one of my long, long, long rivals. And of course I battled him last season in the Indigo League of Legends. Now looking up at his team, of course, he had access to his Uber was actually Gengar or Mega Gengar. Uh, and then having access to Talonflame and Ferrothorn and Ditto, it just really changed around what I could bring to this battle. Of course, I didn't want to bring anything that relied on setting up in case Ditto came in and copied the boost. And I actually bred a brand new Ambipom for this battle. I named him Boompa. Thank you to my girlfriend for that nickname. Uh, he has Beat Up. Of course, Beat Up requires there to be active, conscious party members. And for each one that's conscious, you get an individual attack to use against the opponent. Now in generation six, beat up mechanics had ch changed a little bit when beat up first came out. The damage was based on the health of each remaining party member. Now it is based on the party members that are remaining, their attack modifier divided by something, and then that's the base uh, amount of damage for that hit. So I just wanted to start off with that. He actually ends up leading out with his Manectric, and I was really, really afraid that he wouldn't just not um, switch out, and so I didn't want to try to use an electric move. He critical hits me with what was probably hidden power dark because he probably doesn't have a hidden power set on Ditto. Um, and I just went for overheat, hoping to get some solid damage on Ditto. Ditto's HP is pretty low, so any damage that I can get, even if he transformed into something later on, will make him easier to pick off for Caesar. Uh, here I needed to switch out immediately from Gastrodon. I figured uh, if he stayed in, he doesn't really want to take this bandit hit, and if he switches out into something, I can get the priority with U-Turn. Since he did stay in, I expected Scald coming from him, maybe Toxic, but he actually just goes for Recover, so that was kind of, uh, I didn't really gain me anything by hitting him with that banded U-Turn, but based on the damage from U-Turn, I definitely know that he is uh, physically defensive, and I figured that he would switch out from Fluff and Trouble the Whimsicott, and that means I'm just gonna double switch right into Manectric, expecting him to go into his Ferrothorn. Uh, this gives me an opportunity to finally Mega Evolve, which is nice, because then his Ditto won't be able to pick up Lightning Rod from my net trick. Uh, and then, of course, if he decides to stay in, I can hit him with a wonderful Overheat type attack. Now, he does decide to go back into Ditto, which is mildly annoying. Uh, I just went for Overheat because I didn't have any reason to overpredict. Um, and even if he has Toxic, Whimsicott is still a very safe switch into Gastrodon. I'm gonna go ahead and make that switch out now because I don't really want Galvani to take the ground type attack if he does have it. And expecting that ground type attack, I went on to Latios this time, but I think he definitely expected me to go to Whimsicott as he went for Toxic. But I don't mind that on Latios. Latios is actually carrying choice specs with Trick and Defog this week. So uh, Draco Meteor, Trick, Defog, and um, Psyshock. Kind of a weird set, I wouldn't really bring it to a general match, but in league format it's nice because I can see if I need to bother with Defog or not. Now I don't really like giving Gastrodon specs because it powers up the attack of Scald or maybe Earth Power, but locking a wall into one attack and basically preventing it from recovering is very very nice. Uh, since I don't really have any reason to stay in here, and he's probably going to switch out since he's locked into Recover, I go back on into my Bandit Caesar, and he goes out into Ferrothorn. And I was like, all right, now's the time I can hit this thing with a banded superpower. And he is definitely defensively invested because if he weren't, I would have KO'd him in one hit there. I take a decent amount of recoil from the Iron Barbs and Rocky Helmet, which sucks, but I definitely like that extra damage. He actually went for the Power Whip. He may have been expecting me to U-turn out into something. Uh, the Power Whip wouldn't have done too much damage, so I don't think I'm too harmed by missing that. I just went for superpower again, expecting the Gastrodon to come in. I just wanted to get some chip damage on it because I have Choice Ban, it will still do a decent amount of damage. Uh, but he brings in Gengar and then double switches immediately out into Flygon. Uh, since he brought out Gengar, he definitely expected me to switch into Drapion, and so now he's able to either go for a U-Turn or Earthquake to get some priority on. But since he just goes straight for Earthquake, this is a perfect switch back into Whimsicott. Uh, this is not a defensive Whimsicott, this is a fully offensive one actually. And so I'm able to outspeed Flygon, and surprisingly, even with the Pixie Plate, I don't KO it with a Moonblast, which makes me wonder if he is somewhat uh, bulky or something like that, because typically Flygon can't take those types of hits. Um, he does show Flamethrower, which does a pretty good amount of damage to Whimsicott, 
but not quite enough as I'm able to finish him off with another Moon Blast. Now, unfortunately, this gives him a free switch into his Talon Flame, but Drapion with the defensive investment, even if it's specially defensive, can take hits from Talon Flame all day. It can, take, it can take three hits from it. Unfortunately, it can't take three hits when it gets burned from a Flare Blitz, which sucks. It's like a 10% chance of burn. Very, very lucky there. Uh, he's just going to go for a Brave Bird on the secondary attack here. And I was hoping that I could live it so I could at least knock off Talonflame's item. And Drapion holds on with 1 HP. Thank you, Drapion. You, you should have been able to take one more attack there. But we are able to get rid of Sharp Beak, which is nice. His uh, Brave Bird won't be doing as much damage to my team. Uh, unfortunately, Drapion goes down here to that burn. But removing Talonflame's item is quite nice. And it's underneath half HP if he wants to stay in. Um, I can set up Stealth Rock Slater or something like that. Uh, he must have forgotten the priority on Fake Out is going to out-prioritize his Brave Bird. And so I'm able to finish off Talonflame immediately. And as he brings in Gengar, I've only lost one teammate at this point in the battle. And I needed at least five to KO Mega Gengar, the standard one, from full health. And so we're going to go straight for beat up here. That's one hit. We have two, three, four, and four is actually enough to KO Mega Gengar which is fantastic. So Boompa's main purpose of handling Gengar has been completely successful. Now with that in mind, I still need to play carefully around uh, the Gastrodon. I don't want it getting off specs hit, specs based hits, excuse me, on my Pokemon. So we're just gonna go right into Latios, whom I know can take any hit from it and hit it back with a Draco Meteor or at the very least, um, just sponge some attacks. Granted, I don't want to stick around for too long because I am toxic, but he can't recover without switching out and switching back in. So by doing so much damage to him at one time, it basically forces him to choose as you want to switch out and preserve Gastrodon and come back and try to recover later only to have to switch out again. Or is he going to just stay in here and keep on using Skull trying to get as much damage as he can? Uh, he does opt to save Gastrodon probably because I am. Uh, I do have Caesar still. And I just went for Draco Meteor again because it's Latios. I don't have any reason not to do so because he doesn't have any fairy types on his team. And Ferrothorn comes in just to be death fodder to the attack because it was at such a low HP after Caesar hit it with a superpower earlier. Now here, uh, I, I do have leftovers from the Gastrodon, which is nice. It's offsetting the Toxic a little bit, but this is precisely why I didn't want to... Um, have a Latios that set up or anything because Ditto comes in. Now, I don't know if Connor remembered or not, but he definitely would copy my special attack drops that I have right now. And so even though he's using Psy Shock, it being based off of his lowered special attack minus four against Caesar's superior defense stat means he's not really going to be able to do any damage. And from this range, I can easily finish off both of his Pokemon with any move from Caesar. I decided to go for a U-turn there in case he went back out into Gastrodon which he does do, which proves that his Ditto is actually probably Scarfed. Uh, so I just go back out into Fluff and Trouble here. I could have gone out into um, Ambipom and just used Fake Out again, but I didn't want to switch out into Ambipom and then he come in with his Ditto and then hit me with Fake Out and then get a crit or something like that. So I just wanted to keep things simple. Went out into Fluff and Trouble. Now I can go back out into Caesar, And because he's transformed into Whimsicott, now he's weak to Bullet Punch, which is even nicer. And that right there is going to be the end of the week four battle. So next up, uh, we, we have some additional challenges ahead of us, but thank you very much, Connor, for that battle. Rather enjoyed it. It's always fun to plan for a match against you. Um, week five is going to be a sit out week because of the person who I was supposed to face had some other obligations, so we won't be participating anymore. But in week six, we'll be going up against U-Turn uh, Crobat. So look forward to that. And in the meantime, I hope you guys have a great day. We'll talk to you later. Bye-bye now.